you might be thinking, well, I don't shoot bracketed, or how can I take advantage of this without changing my shooting style? Well, the truth is you don't have to shoot bracketed. Personally, it's my preference, and there's a lot of times when shooting under harsh lighting conditions or with interiors where there's a wide dynamic range that it's really essential. But a lot of times you might be able to get by with just a single exposure. This is partially due to the fact that now if you're shooting raw, many cameras can shoot with 10 bits, 12 bits, or 14 bits of information. The old days, a JPEG only had eight bits of information. Now, that may sound complex, but what's basically meant is two to the eighth power. So there was 256 levels of detail in the RGB channels. That's why your histogram would read from zero to 255. Well, easy enough, 255 times 255 times 255 for the red, green, and blue meant that you had a possibility of millions of colors. And that sounds like a lot, but it's really not. These days with 16-bit printers, ultra high definition displays, wide gamut range mobile phones, HDR coming to televisions, we have lots of ways that people can see more dynamic range in their images. And an image that represents color and depth with more lifelike details is more appealing. So fortunately, even if you have a single raw file, as long as it's 10, 12, or 14 bit, there's a lot you can get out of it. And let's take a look at that previous example. In this case, I'm gonna open up just a single RAW file, the middle exposure from that same scene. And I'm gonna tell it to create a high dynamic range image from this single photo. It takes a look at the shadows and highlights and reads into the RAW file and does a little bit of behind the scenes magic, trying to extrapolate the most details from all of the ranges within the file. You may recall if you've ever opened up a RAW file that you can move the exposure slider pretty far left to right and really brighten or darken the photo. So what's really happening under the hood is it's reaching inside that RAW file and pulling out all of the details in the shadows and highlights and then recompositing those back together into a new image. You see here, we've got a pretty good photo. And if I start to bring up that HDR enhance to bring out some of the details, recover the highlights, lift the shadows, and start to maximize the contrast, we still get a lot of information there in that file. If we take a look here at the before and the after, you see that the HDR processing on a single file really finds a lot of information. This is a relatively complex scene here. We've got a New York brownstone with rich shadows, reds, purples, greens, a wide range of colors in a dingy urban environment. And when we don't maximize that dynamic range, some of the things like the texture and the brick, the old, really subtle details in the marble stone there, and some of the highlights become lost. But by pulling that out in the single HDR file, just boosting the shadows and highlights, and a little bit of contrast, it's amazing how much more you can see. So a lot of folks are really hesitant to embrace HDR imaging. They think of it as an over the top type technique. But as you can see here, if you use the shadows and highlights slider and tools like Clarity and other software packages, the use of HDR can do some amazing things.